This is the bad one in the franchise. Rocky V is a 1990 sports drama film written by Sylvester Stallone and directed by John G. John G. Avildsen, who returned to the franchise after abandoning, abandoning it after the first to make the first three Karate Kid films to varying degrees of quality. After the mixed reception of the fourth film, Stallone decided to try and bring the franchise back to its roots by making it dramatic again and bringing Rocky back to Philly. The problem is that Stallone still throws in a lot of wacky and kooky scenes that completely ruined the tone a lot more than 3 or 4 ever did. As you can see, I'm so excited to review my least favorite movie in the whole franchise and the only bad Rocky film that's ever been made. Bush... Save the criticism for later. What's this film about? Boy, is that a good question. Rocky Balboa is still rich and somehow moved heads between both films while he was in Russia. If you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about. Also, his son doubled in age between movies 4 and 5. Again, if you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about. In fact, we never find out how long 4 and 5 take place apart from each other. That makes no sense. Christmas for later, Christmas for later. Anyways, Rocky and, his, Rocky and his family have to move back to Philadelphia after Polly basically sells off everything to their accountant who pulls a massive middle finger to Rocky and now they've lost their home and riches. Rocky refer refurbishes Mickey's old gym but this new eager boxer named Tommy Gunn played by real life boxer Tommy Morrison wants to fight. Rocky can't fight anymore because his beating against Drago messed up his brain, so he helps Tommy become famous. Then this boxing manager named George Washington Duke, played by Richard Gant. Do you get it? It's like America. Funny. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna call him Don King because that's basically who he is. If you know sports, you know Don King. Once King starts to inter to, to, to corrupt Tommy. Rocky now has to fight him in an alleyway, and his son wants to fight, but he's useless and... I'm sorry, was my description of this film hard to understand? Unless I felt watching it. This film tries to juggle so many plots at the same time, and none of them work. However, the annoying thing is, is that it could have worked. Rocky going back to Philadelphia and meeting a young, eager boxer. He doesn't train well at first. But Rocky helps him become popular. But then he become. But then Tommy becomes corrupted. The new boxer, his name isn't Tommy in the scenario, but the new boxer becomes corrupted by the fame and the fact that he's under Rocky's shadow. That would have been such a good plush. Here are the problems. Number one, Don King. His character should have been like Apollo, comic collected only lashing out when things don't go his way. Number two, when Rocky meets Tommy. He doesn't come off as an eager boxer who wants to train to be the best. He's more of an obsessive fan who when Rocky gives him a chance at the gym, Tommy mercilessly beats the sparring partner. He's violent, and yet Rocky still helps him. Number three. Speaking of which, Rocky is unlikable. He gets so caught up with Tommy that he usually ignores his son and family. It could have been an interesting plot to delve into, but they execute it in the worst way possible. Number four. His son wants to fight because of getting bullied. Okay, cool. He believes that fighting is the answer to everything. So does Rocky. The funniest thing is that the bullies actually become his friends after he's fight after he fights them. Yeah, sure. Fighting is the answer to everything. Sure. Why not, movie? Number five. When when we are watching Rocky and Tommy rise up in fame, and Tommy begins to become corrupted, it doesn't gradually show them train, become rich, and then they're fallish. It rushes right through it. Don't believe me? Then take a look at this. Look at this. This is the DVD menu of Rocky V that I recorded, obviously. Well edited, right? It basically shows a montage, and that's usually what all the DVD menus are like. They show montages of scenes that are in the movie. Some of it looks like they are edited to look the same, but surely this isn't what, how the actual film looks. Well, not completely, but it's not, not like this. Because let me show you the film before I show you this scene. The rest of the scene, because basically, as can be seen later, this is basically how the actual film plays out. For the most part. Just watch. That's right, I'm just gonna copyright claim for you guys. 
Look what I do for you. Take a look at this. Doesn't it look eerily similar to what we just saw in like the DVD menu? That's because this isn't how it's edited in like the DVD menu. This is how the goddamn film is. Also, like, I'm not gonna skip. Like, this is. It's literally so similar. So s damn similar. This is from a different part of the video of like this montage of Rocky V. Of, like, Tommy just fighting and going everywhere. Like, take a look at this. Like, this isn't how it's in the actual movie. Like, completely. But it's pretty damn close to the DVD menu. That's right. There's another montage. This is a completely different montage. There's two montages. And they're basically very similar, where they just... Sprum through a lot of crap that would have been a lot more interesting. But, sh no. It's basically the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing. thing. Why is all the interesting stuff rushed and all the boring, obnoxious crap and, like, the main stuff that no one cares about? Number six. Speaking of obnoxious, Polly, as I mentioned, gives all of the money to Rocky's attendant using power of attorney, which causes Rocky's family to go back to Philly in the first place. What a likable character. And the worst part is that everyone forgives him after and pretend like nothing happened. Like, hello? He destroyed your livelihoods and you forgave him? You all on weed? And I'm turning to the nostalgia critic, but I'm sorry. This film is so incredibly insulting to the rest of the franchise. This is the one black spot in an otherwise fantastic franchise. <clears throat> sorry. Let's continue. Number seven. It's shown that Rocky took a heavy beating from the Drago fight and has discovered that Rocky can't fight again because if he does, he might die. That? We need to have a street fight with Tommy, which is... Pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty cool fight. It's also shown that Rocky keeps having like these uh, random sounds and noises appear out of nowhere. It's mainly just a psychological thing. That would that could have been interesting. How does ha having him try to deal with the brain damage as it begins to take a toll on him mentally? Oh, uh, what do they do with it? Oh, they show it once? That's cool. Goff. And then finally, number eight. The time skip. It makes no sense. Were they in... Rushed out for five years, or according to the stupid Wikipedia page, uh, six, five, six, six, where does it say it? Six years? Or is it just like, let's just read the thing about uh, Polly and all that crap. So they never actually give a good explanation as to how long they were in Russia for. They just say, oh, they just stay there for a while, sure, why not? Uh, and also Rocky's son aged and also like a lot of other things happened it doesn't matter nothing matters so were they just in russia for five years some wacky things happened in between didn't they chernobyl collapse of the union countries leaving Berlin wall falling oh wait <laughs> i forgot rocky gave a speech at the end of four that ended the cold war guess they became peace ambassadors when they stayed there for five Years! Why are you like this? Can you see why I hate this now? There's just so many problems that make this such a bad film. However, despite this, there are a few good things I like about it. In fact, some of the best things in the entire franchise. Scene where Rocky goes back to Mickey's gym and we get a flashback of a scene between him and Mickey. It's genuinely great. Another great scene is the ending where Rocky talks to his son at the Philadelphia Steps and they actually go into the building, which Rocky's never done before. It's pretty funny and wholesome. However, my favourite scene in the whole film is the end credits. No, I don't mean it like that. The credits show a black and white photo montage of the first five films. An idea taken from Rocky IV, when it shows a montage, black and white photo montage of just that film, to the tune of The Measure of a Man by Elton John. It's a fantastic sequence, and of course I can't show it. I've shown, or I've already shown too much footage from the film, showing any more, I'll get shot in the head by MGM. But it genuinely is a fantastic sequence, and I love it very much. It's just such a good, see, it's just a good part of the movie. It really shows progression of the franchise. It almost makes this look like a good film. But it's not. This was supposed to be the last film of the franchise. What a waste of a finale. The characters weren't as annihilated 
story tweaked a bit, and the writing improved upon, this would be one of the best films in the franchise. Not the best, but still good. But that's not what we got. What we got was a shallow attempt at making a Rocky film. There's barely any harsh soul or love put into this one like there was with the original, or even the second, third, or fourth. It's cheap, hollow, just unpleasant to sit through. The plot has so many holes, and many other more interesting plots are skipped. The characters are horribly unlikable, the writing is generic and stale, and the messages are jumbled and messed up. However, the editing and cinematography is still good, as always. There are a few select scenes that, that are pretty good, and like I said, the end credit sequence is fantastic. This film, to me, is kind of like a bug's life. It has more positives than negatives, but the negatives are so infuriating, they drag down the film so heavily. I give this film a 4.5 out of 10. A disappointing end to a wonderful franchise. But then, but then Sloan made Rocky Balboa, which should have been called Rocky Six. but here we are. And it was successful, and so are the Creed films, and now Rocky is back on top. And if you're wondering why I'm not reviewing the other films, there's a very simple fact why. I don't care. And also because of my procrastination... And also because of my... Let me try that again. And also because of my... And also because of my procrastination problems, we're already halfway into October. You know what that means? That's right. Halloween. I hope the first thing we review isn't something absolutely horrifying to the point where it will make me will give myself nightmares. Bye.